I flew as a Canadian astronaut on the mission STS-42 Space Shuttle Discovery back in January of 1992. Currently, my role as president of the foundation that bears my name is to conduct some research into the migratory corridor habitats and behaviors of certain species of migratory birds. We've been trying to utilize photography to put together a compelling reason why people need to pay attention to these very fragile organisms and their fragile environments. We think that doing it at three different levels, the aerial surface and space, will provide the different perspective. So it's as if we were down at the carpet level with a magnifying glass on the surface, and then we get up and we see the patterns a little bit differently. And then we get into space and see this whole corridor but we see different patterns that we didn't even know existed. So the space station can provide us these images so we can actually construct part of that flight, a part of that corridor of one of these species. Growing up as a, as a Canadian, uh, Dr. Bundar was one of my heroes. Uh, she was the first female astronaut that we had uh, in Canada. And uh, I always kind of looked up to her as because she was also a scientist and a physician. And there she was offering me the chance to participate in this beautiful project. And I love because it fit with my, my hopes of uh, sharing from Space Station my love of the environment. One of the challenges of taking photos of the Earth uh, from Space Station is that we're going pretty fast. You know, we're going around the world in about an hour and a half, flying at uh, five miles a second. And as you get to the cupola, get your camera ready, you're looking at previous images, satellite imagery, trying to wrap your mind around what you're trying to see. And then you look forward towards, uh, you know, the limb of the earth as the earth is, is, the scene is coming towards you. It's coming pretty fast. And you gotta identify it on the horizon as it approaches, because you don't, you have maybe just a few seconds as you're flying over that location. And then you kind of, you look back and maybe you have a few more chances as you're flying away from it, but that's it, the whole thing last you know way less than a minute uh but uh, kind of chasing the right frame is a bit of an art because you only have one chance to date we have at least i'd say somewhere between 24 25 thousand images provided to us from nasa this was one of the larger imagery projects that we've worked on uh, typically we work with researchers or scientists that are looking at a few different locations on earth maybe no more than 10 and this ended up being about 50 different locations on Earth that we wanted both nadir looking shots, which is a straight down looking shot, as well as earth limb shots. We worked with various crew members over the years to take a lot of these photos, but we also reached back into our database of over 4 million astronaut photos just to see what already existed. We get excited when external groups seek out these types of imagery projects with us, especially scientific and research groups. Space exploration really uh, offers us an amazing perspective on our home. And I think this project is a, is a beautiful example of how we can kind of scratch our heads, take a few steps back, look at the big picture. It's about taking that creativity that we're offered in space, combining that with the aerial shots of getting closer and closer to when they put their feet on the ground, to me is an extraordinary way of trying to bring together this emotional story of the importance of habitat protection so that these beautiful, magnificent creatures that fly the way we do in space can survive on our planet for future generations. Subscribe for more space.